Now, let's just move. We're talking elections in the United States in just a little bit, but an area, of course, that is really crucial to what is going on. In fact, in some respects, you could say perhaps tangibly more crucial to matters here at home. France's political future up in the air with the far right surging in polls, but other forces fighting to end three days uh, to end the three days before the parliamentary vote. Depending on the result, President Emmanuel Macron could be left in a tense coalition uh, possibility with a prime minister from an opposing party or with a chamber unable to produce a stable majority for at least a year to govern the EU's second economy and, of course, top military power. Around two-thirds of eligible voters plan to cast their ballots, which would be the highest level since 1997. Uh, let's speak to the author at The Spectator. Gavin Mortimer is with us. Gavin, good afternoon to you. Afternoon, Ian. Uh, nice to have you with us. Um, so, listen, I mean, this is, I, I, I said just a second ago, uh, we, we a lot of eyes on America at the moment, Biden, Trump, etc. But I think it's not unreasonable to form at least an argument that this is in terms of how things affect us and Europe, uh, I mean, it gets no more serious than what is happening in France right now. No, it doesn't. It's the most significant uh, election, parliamentary election, arguably in the uh, history of the Fifth Republic, which has been going since 1958. Um, and it really comes down to three blocks. You've got Macron centrists, you've got um, the left, which is composed of centre-left socialists and radical far-left um, uh, sort of like momentum, uh, the Gallic equivalent of momentum. I mean, you've got Marine Le Pen's uh, right-wing coalition. She's uh, she's allied with some members of the centre-right Republicans. So you've got these three blocks. At the moment, Marine Le Pen is well on course to win the first round of voting. It's a two-round election. Um, and uh, if she does win, I think the country will be thrown into chaos a month before the Olympic Games. And, yes, it's interesting that Macron even went there, given the, <laughs> the Olympic Games going on, but clearly after the EU elections he felt he had uh, no other options. I'm seeing some people saying that's a, that was a good move, a brave move, or the right democratic move, and others saying it, you know, it's just taken the place into chaos. If Le Pen does well on, uh, on Saturday... To, where are we now? Saturday... Sunday, Sunday. On Sunday. Um, what's the next move then? How indicative is, is that of the second vote, which is literally seven days later? Yeah, that's a good question, Ian, because what you've had in the past, for the last 10 years, Marine Le, pa Marine Le Pen's party has done quite well yes. in um, local council elections, in parliamentary elections. I mean, what's happened? You've had the Republican front, sort of like a cordon sanitaire, um, between the first and the second round. So the, the left and the centrists gang up and uh, and sort of drop candidates out so so that they their voters will vote against Marine Le Pen's. But that doesn't work. That that first um, began to disintegrate this Republican front two years ago in the parliamentary elections when Marine Le Pen's party went from having eight MPs to 88 MPs. Um, and of course, since then, what you've happened is, and this is very significant here, with the um, Hamas attack and, and the Gaza conflict, what you've got is that the, the left has become more radical. It's, it's, there are elements of it uh, which are pro-Hamas, not just pro-Palestine, pro-Hamas. A week after the attack, uh, one MP of, um, of the far left described Hamas as a resistance movement. And so what, what that has done is um, that has almost helped normalise Marine Le Pen, which has been her strategy since taken over from her anti-Semitic father 14 years ago. So she is now, there's no stigma, there's no shame um, in voting for Marine Le Pen. I live, I'm talking to you from Burgundy. The uh, I know lots of people who quite, yeah. quite happily tell me they're voting Le Pen. So I think that's not going to work. And um, it's just a question of whether she can get enough seats for an absolute majority. Now, there are 577 seats in the National Assembly, the Parliament. So if my maths is, is stands up, it's about 288 seats. That's a big ask. So as you mentioned at the, at the top of the, uh, of the segment, it's more likely there's going to be a hung parliament, but with a prime minister from Marine Le Pen's party, probably, the tw well, it, it would be the 28-year-old Jordan Bardella. So, in t so the pro I was about to say, who's, who's the president in a week's time? 
Well, it will be Macron. Um, and this is, of course, exercising the minds of the French commentators and you know, on the chat shows are just full of what will happen. Would, would Macron resign? Well, he could do, but this is a man with an ego so huge, he makes Donald Trump look humble. So it would be unlikely that he would resign. There is another possibility that he could trigger, trigger Article 16 of the Constitution, which more or less gives him um, unlimited power. Dare I say it, some sort of dictatorship. Wow. Um, which many, what one might say that's, that would be Macron's ultimate dream. Um, so we're in a very uncertain, a very, very volatile situation. Now, the other um, factor worth mentioning, in is that what would be the reaction on the streets of the left, particularly the radical left, if, if Le Pen won um, uh, a majority? Yeah. People expect extreme violence. They have a reputation, um, Antifa, Black Bloc, for rampaging whenever um, they don't like uh, the state of a country. Uh, I was at a, a left-wing demonstration a couple of weeks ago in Paris, and Antifa were there uh, smashing shop windows and uh, throwing bottles at police. So I think um, uh, it, it is a very worrying situation. Well, we will watch and wait and see. Let's speak again, Gavin, um, after certainly after Sunday, and see what uh, w what it's telling us from that. But that is Gavin Mortimer. Uh, he's uh, from The Spectator. He's there live in France covering that election. Thank you to him.